The Snatch Game is the staple challenge of Drag Race that offers the queens, in my opinion, the most creative freedom of any challenge. Snatch Game allows a queen to go in pretty much any direction, and while a fair amount of the time it does not work out, the queen at least has that freedom. All of that out of the way, across the years, we have seen some queens use that creative freedom in very interesting ways. Today, I will be talking about the weirdest Snatch Game picks. So, the first weird Snatch Game pick that I want to talk about is Tsunami Muse as the Gold Tooth Fairy. I am recording this about two hours after the Snatch Game aired. Maybe I will gain mental clarity in time, but I am lost. I love Tsunami Muse, and I'm very disappointed that she got the invisible edit, but wow, what was this? Tsunami Muse is a very funny queen, she won the reading challenge, so Snatch Game was not a guaranteed loss. What made it a guaranteed loss is doing this pick. I don't know if Tsunami was inspired by Shay's Gold Tooth Fairy Runway from two years ago, but I just don't get what she was going for. Normally, with some of the weird Snatch Game picks, even if they don't succeed, you can see the perspective. I can't even see the perspective here. I really wanted this to be Tsunami's week. I didn't think she was gonna win over Safira or Jane, but I really wanted her to be in the top and get a chance to shine. Sadly, we he did not see this and she was eliminated, but honestly, hot take, this is the weirdest US Snatch Game choice that anyone has made. The first ever really weird Snatch Game pick came in Season 3 with Manila Luzon portraying Imelda Marcos. So, for the younger people who would not know her, Imelda Marcos is a Filipino politician. She was the first lady in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then later a member of the Philippine House of Representatives. The main joke that Manila had, which was the entire focus of her snatch game, was Imelda Marcos's shoes. Imelda Marcos, using stolen government money, amassed a collection of 3,000 pairs of shoes. This woman was one of the most corrupt people ever, and it made for a very weird choice. I get what Manila was going for, because the concept of a politician stealing billions from their taxpayers to pay for designer shoes, is it is a weird choice. It is absolutely ridiculous, and it sounds like it would be a hilarious Snatch Game. Sadly, the execution was just not there. Manila's Snatch Game came off as incredibly one-note, but I'm really glad she opened the door for weird choices. Interestingly, the next really weird Snatch Game pick is another corrupt Asian politician. In this case, it is Kim Jong-un being impersonated by Kim Chi on Season 8. Or I guess Kimmy Jong-un, cause that's a difference. This one is very weird. With Imelda Marcos, you add a very obvious angle of Corrupt politician, designer clothes, criminal, those are all different types of joke you can make. As for Kim Jong-un, you have jokes about him being oppressive to his people, you have jokes about his weapons of mass destruction, which he did make, I will credit her that, but you really don't have as much of an angle. Kim Jong-un does not have a big, over-the-top personality. And he hasn't done any big, over-the-top things that aren't completely disgusting from a human rights level. This choice should not have worked as well as it did. I'm not gonna claim it worked, but it worked a lot better than I thought it would. Next, continuing the row of politicians, is Mohart as Maxine Waters. This is yet another Snatch Game where I couldn't tell you the angle they were going for. Impersonating a politician in Snatch Game is always a risk. It can work if that politician has a big reputation or a big personality, someone like Trump, Margaret Thatcher, I think Marjorie Taylor Greene would be a honestly not half bad Snatch Game pick, but for some reason... Mohart goes with Maxine Waters. Maxine does not have this big personality. She has a long history of doing the right thing in Congress, but that doesn't mean she has this big, over-the-top personality that makes her easy to impersonate. I fail to see how this would work, even if Mohart was doing well in the Snatch Game. This pick just kinda seemed doomed to fail from the start. 
Finally, breaking the line of politicians, we have Gigi Good as Maria the Robot, technically Sophia the Robot. So this is a very weird choice. I believe it is the first non-human impersonated in a Snatch game. Massive, massive risk, and while it did work for Gigi, that does not mean that this is a normal pick. In the workroom discussion, RuPaul, who liked Gigi, was pretty desperately trying to talk her out of it. RuPaul did not see how this Snatch Game could work, and honestly, based off the previous out-of-the-box Snatch Game picks, I can't really blame RuPaul. Gigi doing Sophia is... It's not a good plan, she should just do a celebrity that she can be funny with. Luckily, Gigi had the self-confidence to make this work. The vast majority of queens would not have been willing to stand up to RuPaul like that, so props to Gigi. Still, very weird choice. Glad we got it. Weird choice. Next, once again a politician, we have Jasmine Kennedy as Betsy DeVos. I have said pretty much everything I have to say about politician snatch games. That said, I did want to give credit to this because once again this was just a very weird choice that most people could not make work. Jasmine didn't make it work, but that is not a reflection on Jasmine. This was just a bad choice. Next, we have Selena as the Virgin Mary. This is a very, very weird choice, and it falls into one of the two categories of weird choices. A choice where someone has a very distinct idea of what they want, and a choice where someone has no idea what they want, and they're just relying on a weird character. Selena had a very unique concept. She knew exactly what she needed to do, and it was very memorable. I personally did not enjoy it, and I do believe she was on the lower end, at least for me. But, once again, I have to give credit where credit is due. This was a very weird pick that she did make work. She was safe, she was memorable, she honestly looked the part, and for a safe performance, I can't really ask for more. I do love me some biblical Snatch Game choices, but Selena was probably not the person to make this one work. Speaking of biblical Snatch Games that did work, we have Trinity the Chuck as Lucifer on All Star 7. Trinity is not the best at Drag Race comedy challenges, but for some reason, Snatch Game is where she comes alive. That is exactly what happened here. While this is kind of low-hanging fruit compared to some of Trinity's other Snatch Games, she did make it work. This is how you do a concept for a Snatch Game. I believe that Raja should have gotten the win over Trinity, but Trinity still should have been in the top. It is very difficult to make a choice like this work. I have to give credit to Trinity. She is great at Snatch Game, she is very good at coming up with an idea and executing that idea perfectly. It is where Trinity excels the most at, and it's always good when you see someone do a really out-of-the-box choice, and it actually pays off for them. Moving back to Season 15, we have Jax as Mona Lisa. So, this one is interesting, because once again, we have a queen impersonating a non-human slash character. Mona Lisa does not have a personality, so you can really go in any number of directions. This is what Jax did, portraying Mona Lisa as kinda goofy, kinda out there, and it really did work for Jax. Since Season 15 got chopped up so much, and Snatch Game as a whole is already incredibly chopped up, we don't know exactly how Jax did, but based off what the edit wanted to tell us, she did a pretty good job. This was a Snatch Game with a lot of people who did well and a lot of people who did bad. Jax was able to take this very weird concept of portraying a literal piece of art and made it work. Jax did not do too well on Drag Race, but she really was able to make this ridiculous concept work, so good for her. The final queen of this video is Heidi in Closet as Blackbeard. Blackbeard is a historical pirate, so we don't know much about his personality. This very much helps it work as a role, and I think Heidi could have pulled this off if she was in a good headspace mentally. Sadly, going into Snatch Game, she was very much in her head, but I think this choice could have gone really well if Heidi was able to put her full head into the competition.
Ultimately, I think weird Snatch Game choices are great. I think they are one of the biggest things that makes this challenge interesting. If you could not do, like, weird outside-of-the-box choices, we probably would not have seen Snatch Game come back as much. There's only so many gay icons you can do, so adding historical figures, inanimate objects into the mix makes the challenge very interesting. Hey, it's Drag Race Rejudged. Do you want gay sh well then check out the RuPaul's Drag Race Rejudged YouTube channel and hit subscribe.